Hey, how you doing? This is Norm Stockton, and I'm here at the Galleon Kruger factory in Stockton, California, ironically enough. And I'm here with Bob Galleon, who started it all. And uh, thanks for having me in to check out your facility days. I, I, I've been here a handful of times and really uh, enjoy it. It's really been sort of uh, illuminating um, just in terms of how the stuff's put together and, and just the quality that goes into, into this gear that I love. So um, can we kind of cruise around and check out the sure. facility a little bit? Sure. Okay, awesome. Let's go. Welcome, by the way. Oh, thanks. <laughs> All right, so um, actually, we're, I guess we're starting out going into the room that, uh, where I first had my major epiphany as far as Galleon Kruger gear. What is this room called, anyway? Uh, it's like the sound well, you know, lab. That's a good question. Uh, we need to name it. It's where we put all the calls. Now, this is where we, uh, when we design speaker cabinets, they end up getting, uh, we make a first shot with the computer system, some of which you saw in our opening shot. But when we get the first prototypes, then we bring them in here and we measure them on this computer system over here. And uh, then we tune them and change various characteristics of the speaker and the cabinet to make the system work together properly. So we spend a lot of time in here just, you know, cutting by hand and modifying the speakers and the cabinets by hand to get the sound that's correct. Yeah. So you see a lot of, a lot of these are just old calls, things that we've uh, torn up and messed around with, and uh, then they just sort of sit back here, and we drag them out later to compare them to other designs. So we have a large collection of old stuff here. Yeah, and it looks like some new stuff, too. That's, uh, is there an 810 going on there? Is that a prototype or something? Well, that's a good example. This is the first cut of our new A10 cabinet, and we're playing around with the parameters and the speaker, both the cabinet and the speaker parameters to get it right. It's Neo, so it'll be very lightweight. It's, we're trying to get it down to about 110 pounds, which is 70 or 80 pounds less than uh, anybody else's. Wow. It'll be very lightweight. Like, for example, we're playing around with the different alloys for the grill. We're going to take maybe five pounds out of the grill. Oh, yeah. What's kind of fun for me about this room, too, is that uh, when I first was talking to GK about um, about their, their rigs, uh, the, the uh, artist relations person at the time um, flew my rig up that I had been using for years. And, uh, you know, we set up kind of pretty much right about here. And, you know, he, he said he asked me to dial in the tones that I was, you know, that were my favorite kind of tones. And so I... You know, tweaked a couple knobs and it's like, oh, yeah, that's kind of why I play this particular rig. Um, and he started tweaking the knobs on the on the GK rig. Uh, and after about 10 minutes or so, we were going back and forth, and the GK was killing this other rig. Uh, and it was, but it had a much more versatile sound as well, and uh, it's about a third of the price, so. That was kind of the turning point for me, and I became a huge, huge fan of the of the Galleon Kruger stuff. Um, so it kind of all started here in the in the warehouse, which is actually kind of yeah, it's kind of cool because you can see all the warehousing for the GK. So this whole facility is yours, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's just like uh, it's a pretty cool operation. Is there anything else? Uh, I, as as we walked in, I kind of noticed that cab looks like there's a story to that one. Well, that's a very early cabinet. It was built in my garage. Is that right? Yeah, this is one that was called GMT, which stood for Galleon Martin Taylor, which Taylor was a high school friend of mine, and Martin was a lab partner of mine at Hewlett Packard. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. So, uh, and what, it, what is, are those 12s, 15s? No, uh, yes, those are 12s. 12s, okay. Yeah, that was the first 412. First 412, yeah. <laughs> Circa or what? base. Yeah, serious. What, circa, like, 19... Is that uh, 1975, probably. I, I, I'd have to look it up, but something like that. Wow. That's the, cool. Uh, the whole thing started in 68. No, it was probably 72, 73. Something like that. Awesome. I bought it off a guy. Uh, I'm always collecting the, the old pieces to, you know, 
to have some old memories. Oh, yeah. So somebody had that online somewhere? No, he walked in here and wanted to know if we wanted to buy it. Sure. Absolutely. That happens a lot. Yeah, we, yeah. And it's actually it's still in really good shape, huh? It's in excellent shape, yes. Someday we'll have a little museum and uh, when we get a big enough space and we'll uh, there you display go. all that old stuff. And right, the uh, head for that is right there. What's that? This is the head that came with it. Oh, wow. This is the first... Uh, Wow. All metal head ever, you know, with side frames, rack, you know, die cast side frames, a la Hewlett Packard. That's where I got the idea. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. That is this definitely whole, retro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We used to light this panel up from the back. This lights up, and there's light bulbs back there that light this plastic panel up. Wow. So, Hewlett Packard, I guess I knew that. Is that you were doing that for a long time before you started the GK thing? Five years. Well, no, I, I mean I graduated from uh, college in '67, uh, and uh, from Berkeley, and uh, I simultaneously started my graduate work at Stanford, a job at Hewlett Packard, and this company in my garage. And you, you were a gigging musician, right? Yes, in college. I not not then I was not. Yeah. I didn't have any more time. And it wasn't that good, much of a player anyway, compared to what other guys were doing.